<laughs> ah, good to see you all this morning. And uh, nothing like uh, being transported to the Pacific, eh? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, haven't been able to fly there for a long time, but that time's got to come soon, hey? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's great to be back with you. And um, I have to say that, um, you know, I, I just love it when um, there's no collaboration between any of us and yet we're all hearing from the Holy Spirit. That's how it's supposed to be in the kingdom, isn't it? Uh, because as soon as we started singing that first song, I knew I had the right message for today. <laughs> and you'll see why in a minute. <laughs> so I think we're going to have to sing that first song again later, uh, later at the end of the service. Um, and if my thing here will work. Ah, there we go. Here we go. All right. So um, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. And while we're going there... Um, uh, we're going to be back here Tuesday night. We've had a couple of wild weather weeks uh, with School of the Kingdom. and um, But this week we'll be back here. Isn't this fantastic weather at the moment? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm out as much as I can be on my motorbike in, in this weather. <laughs> Couldn't ride it for a couple of weeks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but... Um, so, uh, back here Tuesday night uh, for School of the Kingdom. And if you... Uh, haven't been along or if you have been and have sort of missed out lately then um, love to see everybody here all right but Hebrews chapter 12 and uh, verse 25 to 28 is where we're going to be reading it says see that you do not refuse him who speaks for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven whose voice then shook the earth but now he has promised saying Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also heaven. That's pretty, pretty interesting, isn't it? Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. How's that? Therefore, so on the basis of this, following on from what we've just read, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Amen? Hallelujah. So, you know, over the years I've heard a lot of prophetic people uh, bringing words saying God's shaking things. Well, I've, I must tell you over the years I've also become a little bit tired of hearing those words. <laughs> because I have to tell you one way or another, there's always something being shaken. Come on. It's true. If you think globally, there's always somewhere where something's being shaken, either politically or there's a war or there's, you know, some other thing going on or, you know, they're in homes and families and lives and businesses and workplaces and in community settings and whatever. There, there's, you know, there's always something going on, isn't there? Yeah. So there's always a shaking somewhere. So some general prophetic word about you know, God's shaking doesn't actually mean much, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> and, and also then, you know, the thing is that if God is shaking, what's his purpose? You know, I don't want to be told God's shaking things and not be told why or what to do about it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just talking personally here, all right? This is just kind of how I'm made up. I want to know what God's doing, what's his, what his purpose is. How do I position myself how do, uh, in the light of that, you know? Uh, how do I actually be in the middle of what God wants to accomplish through what he's doing? Yeah? And so, um, but having said that, the fact is that here we read that God shakes not only the earth but also in the heavens. All right? But he gives a reason. There's a purpose for shaking. And the purpose for shaking is to remove the things that can be shaken. All right? To remove the things that, uh, that can be moved. The things that are not solid, the things that are not fixed in place, the things that are not unshakable, the things that are not immovable. What shaking does is it actually dislodges all those things. True? Yeah. yeah. 
And then what's the purpose? Well, it's to actually get rid of all of that, the things that can be shaken, and to actually then expose what is foundation which cannot be moved, what is unshakable. So guess what? In the last 12 months, the church globally has been shaken. (laughs) And we've found that there's a lot of stuff that has been moved around during the shaking. You know, COVID shook the church. And we found out what we have and what we don't have. Isn't that true? Because a lot of stuff's been removed or the Lord's in the process of trying to or wanting to remove it because maybe we've had a lot of stuff that isn't really central to his kingdom purposes or isn't really what his kingdom expression should be about or maybe isn't built on the right foundation or maybe isn't what he wanted built on the foundation. (laughs) Yeah? And so there's been a lot of shaking going on and a lot of stuff's been moving And what we've got to do is we've got to look for what has not been shaken. Because what remains is what we really have. Do you know there's a a wonderful man of God by the name of Gerald Rollins. I believe his grace was that of an apostle. He he was my pastor when I was a teenager. And uh, he went, uh, went to Africa and did just great apostolic work across that continent came back to Australia, uh, led a church on the Sunshine Coast, and um, he's, he's quite, an, quite an aged man now. But, you know, I remember when I was a young man hearing him preach on one of his trips back from Africa to Australia, and um, he said this. He said, you only possess what you keep under pressure. What pressure causes you to let go of, you don't have that thing. But when you're under pressure, when there's a shaking going on, then what you simply will not and cannot let go of, what remains immovable in us, that's the stuff of the kingdom of God. (laughs) So shaking actually is good for us because it gets rid of stuff that maybe shouldn't be in our lives or in the church (laughs) or in areas of ministry or whatever. And it shows us what can't be moved no matter what happens. It shows us what our foundation really is. It shows us what is strong, what is fixed, what is built in in our lives that no shaking can move. And that's a good thing. We need to know what's been built into our lives, into our our ministries, into into the church and so on that cannot be moved no matter what. Because that's the real stuff of the kingdom of heaven. (laughs) Awesome, hey? Do you know the whole so-called prophetic thing has been shaken? Particularly as a result of the recent um, American election. But you know, it's been coming for a long time. Because there's been a lot that's been out of order in the so-called prophetic. So guess what? There's been a huge shaking. And it's of God. It's of God. And you know, what we're finding is that much of what's been called the prophetic has, has actually not remained. There's a lot of people now who are skeptical when people have a word. Now, I, we, we can't be, become cynical and skeptical, but what it shows is just how little was solid with regard to what has been called the prophetic. Interesting, isn't it? But on the basis of what the writer says here, then what we're going to see emerge is what can't be shaken in the prophetic. The real prophets will emerge. (laughs) I'm looking forward to that. Because I'm tired of the prophetic, which mostly is actually word of knowledge and word of wisdom and words of encouragement. And it's not strictly or truly or genuinely or purely prophecy at all. Come on. Prophetic activations are actually learning how to flow in word of knowledge. Did you know that? That's what they are. Yeah. And so we've had this broad thing called the prophetic and people running around everywhere giving words and yet most of it's not prophecy at all and most people are not prophets. 
and there's been a giant shake-up, which is actually good. <laughs> because we've discovered what's real and what's not. We've discovered what can be moved and what can't be, which is the foundation that is set solid. And then God can rebuild. He can build the genuine upon what cannot be moved. Yeah? So the purpose of shaking is to remove what can be removed, what can be shaken, and to reinforce what can't be shaken. Come on, this is good. This is really good. Because if we want to know what God's purpose is in the stuff of life that we go through, this is it. Because we all go through shakings. I've been through a shaking in the last 12 months. But I have to tell you something. I've discovered I've got more that hasn't moved than I thought. <laughs> and I praise God for that. And you know, I believe that actually happens for most believers, is that when there is a shaking, we actually discover we've got more that's immovable in us than we thought. Because we have a foundation that's been built into our lives. And the foundation is that of Christ. Not just Jesus, the forgiver of sins and all that kind of stuff, but the foundation of the anointed one, the one sent by the Father. That foundation built into our lives, which is heaven built into our hearts, that cannot be moved. And if that can be moved, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah? Amen. So, you know, I am now have moved from being um, a little bit overhearing prophecies about shaking to actually being very enthusiastic about the concept that, of God shaking things. Because it's better to have the, the stuff that can be moved, moved out of our lives. And it's also better to find out what can't be moved so that we can then walk with the Holy Spirit to actually build better upon the foundation that can't be moved in our lives. Amen? How's that? That's just the introduction. I think we should have an altar call, Kelly. What do you reckon? <laughs> this is the purpose of shaking, according to the writer of Hebrews. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? And when it says he shakes in heaven, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, heaven's got stuff that's got to be removed. No, it's talking about the fact that now we actually have, we live a life with the kingdom of heaven here on earth, where heaven and earth are totally connected. You know, it's interesting that today came through about Jacob's ladder. You know, that was an Old Testament, you know, insight into the constant interaction between heaven and earth in the realm of the Spirit. But even more so since the Holy Spirit was sent. Because there's constant interaction between heaven and earth via the Holy Spirit who indwells us, who's inside us. And so when the shaking happens, there's a connection between heaven and earth with regard to that. In other words, when God shakes stuff on the earth, he's got a purpose from heaven to put into place. Isn't that good? This, we're not just down here alone. <laughs> we're not just here trying to figure it out ourselves. We, we have the Holy Spirit in us. We are in the Spirit. Therefore, because we are in the Spirit, then we can, be, we can live in the Spirit. We walk in the Spirit. We're led by the Spirit. This is who we are. So if God begins to shake things, it's because something's transacted in heaven that has to be actually put into place on earth and the shaking is the way God's going to reveal it. This is how the kingdom of heaven works on earth. It's fantastic, isn't it? And so while there are some very difficult seasons that we go through, both you know, in our own lives, you know, it can be financial situations, it can be health situations, it can be all kinds of other family situations, problems in business and work and on and on. You know, there can be all kinds of things that can, that can be, shake us. But the good news is that God in heaven, he actually either initiates it or allows it to happen in order to remove from us stuff that needs to be removed and show us and strengthen and reinforce the foundations that can't be moved so that we can build again and, and it can be solid. So we can build with the Holy Spirit so that what's built on the foundation that remains 
can't be moved in the future. Isn't that awesome? So let's have a look at this. It says, we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Why is this important? Well, firstly, because you know, the connection between heaven and earth is via the Holy Spirit and it's to do with the kingdom of God. Jesus brought the kingdom of heaven to earth. Our mission on earth is to advance the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And this kingdom can't be shaken. I reckon that's great news. See, the kingdom's within us, Jesus said. But the concept is, is um, it's, it's in you and amongst you. This is why Jesus said, where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst. All right? That's not just, well, Jesus only turns up when there's a few of us together. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a, an expression of the fact that the kingdom is both in us and amongst us. So there's a certain dimension of it that, that functions within us individually, but there's a different dimension that func functions within us, amongst us corporately. This is why we need to actually be together, because koinonia can't happen online. <laughs> Welcome to all of those who are watching. But if you're local, koinonia happens here. <laughs> True fellowship only happens face to face. Yeah, in the flesh. Yeah. Something transacts, something of the kingdom of heaven transacts not only in us, but amongst us together. Yeah. And so sometimes the shaking is personal, individual. Sometimes it's amongst us, with us. But it's always because God's got a purpose, which I've already talked about. But we're receiving this kingdom, this kingdom that cannot be shaken. You know, in Daniel 2.42, it says this kingdom will never be destroyed. It'll be eternal. So not only will it cannot not be shaken, but it can't be destroyed. If it can be shaken, there's a chance it could be destroyed, right? <laughs> yeah. But it can't be destroyed. It's an eternal kingdom. It'll be here forever. And the lineage of the king is an eternal lineage. It started out in the, a human lineage from King David. But then it, with Christ, who was born in his lineage, it became an eternal lineage, which was prophesied before. But it's eternal because this is a spiritual kingdom. And its source is not in any people group on earth. Its source is in heaven. It comes from heaven. So it cannot be shaken. It can never fall. It can never fail. This kingdom actually w also will never stop increasing and advancing. Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there'll be no end. So not only can it, will it never fall or fail, not only will it never be destroyed, but also it is unshakable. And no matter what happens in the earth, no matter what happens in our environment, I have to tell you, this kingdom will always keep increasing and advancing in the earth. And it cannot be shaken. You know, the organized church might be shaken, but the kingdom will never be shaken. <laughs> Guess where I want to identify. <laughs> yeah. This is the kingdom that is in us and amongst us. Isn't that awesome? So while God's shaking things, we have an unshakable kingdom within us and amongst us as we gather together. Yeah. Wow. Amen. I don't know about you, but that gives me incredible confidence. Yes. It doesn't matter who's you know, our prime minister. It doesn't matter who's the president of the US or of Russia or whatever. None of these things actually matter in the context of the kingdom. <laughs> It doesn't matter if we have COVID or some other thing going on. It doesn't matter if there's a third, fourth, fifth world war. <laughs> I mean, these things do matter, but you know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is in the context of the kingdom, we are a people who should never be shaken because of the kingdom that we're in and that's in us and that's amongst us when we're together and working together because it is unshakable. It's immovable. But it's a process to get there, which is why at times we do get shaken. But the thing is, every shaking shows us that there's less that can be shaken in us. Does that make sense? <laughs> if that's not the case, we're not growing. And, we're not, and the kingdom's not advancing in us and through us, you know? Yeah. 
But the truth is that God's always taking us forward. He's always growing and developing us. He's always wanting more of Christ to be produced in us and to be seen in us, developed in us. And the list goes on. And so therefore, we are becoming more and more unshakable as time progresses. And every shaking shows that there's more unshakable parts of our lives. Yeah? That's encouraging, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we're receiving this unshakable kingdom. Do you know the concept of receiving in the Greek means that it's close enough that we can grab a hold of it. Yeah, it's arrived. It's here. You know, John the Baptist said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's how it's, it's a similar concept. It's, it's, it's so close you can grab a hold of it. What was Jesus' initial message? Same thing. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is close enough that you can grab a hold of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When Jesus sent the 70 out or the 12, I can't remember exactly which, uh, which group it was now, but for one of them he said, uh, say to them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Same thing. So they were to go out to places, stay in homes, and say to those people, now that I'm here, the kingdom of heaven is so close you can grab a hold of it for yourself. <laughs> and it's an unshakable kingdom. We might be con connecting with people whose lives are very, sh very shakable, you know, but we have an unshakable kingdom in us. And that kingdom becomes close enough for them to grab a hold of when we are in their presence. What an incredible transformation that can be in people's lives to actually see us becoming more and more unshakable, more and more immovable. <laughs> and when we're with them, they can actually access the kingdom of God that's unshakable by faith in Christ. Isn't that incredible? Because we bring it into their presence and therefore it's close enough for them to grab a hold of it, to receive it. Isn't that fantastic? All right, it's near enough, close enough that we can grab it. Every time there's a shaking, there's something more of the kingdom that is close enough to us that we can grab a hold of it so we're not moved. <laughs> To add to what's already in our lives. Fantastic, hey? So we're receiving this unshakable kingdom. In the midst of all the shaking, we are becoming more unshakable. You know, the Apostle Paul, when prophet, town after town, prophet after prophet, you know, prophesied, if you go to Jerusalem, trouble awaits you, and this is what's going to look like, you know. Eventually, when Agabus came, who was the most credible prophet of the, of, of the first century, and the reason I say that is because he's mentioned twice. The other time it says that he prophesied a famine would come and it happened. Now there's a prophet. <laughs> All right? No fluffy words. <laughs> a famine's coming. And it came. And the church responded and, uh, and actually uh, responded to help others in the midst of it. That's how a prophet works. So then when he comes... You know, after all, town after town, prophet after prophet has prophesied the same thing about Paul having trouble awaiting him in Jerusalem. Um, Agabus comes down and he gets really uh, Old Testament-like. Yeah. Right? He, he, um, he grabs a hold of you know, Paul's belt and ties him up and all that kind of stuff and says, you know, this and more is going to happen to you if you go to Jerusalem. And he was right. But you know what Paul's response was? None of these things moved me. Are you getting this this morning? <laughs> you see, he might have been physically shaken, but he was unmo unmoved. He might be emotionally shaken, but he's unmoved. Yeah? He had come to such a place that having prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet and even Agabus all giving the same prophecy and, and his response is, I'm not moved by this stuff. This is where we can get to because this is what the kingdom of God is about. It's an unshakable kingdom and it's close enough that we can grab a hold of this. <laughs> Number two, 
It says, have grace. The interesting thing is, is a similar concept here, is that in the context of that we're receiving an, uh, an unshakable kingdom, we can not only lay a hold of the kingdom because it's close, but we can lay a hold of grace. All right. It does, in my English translation, it says, let us have grace. Well, what does that mean? It actually means in the Greek, lay a hold of the grace. Because the grace is the enabling to go through the shaking process and to, to know what is, is going to be unmovable in us. <laughs> What's not going to be shaken because it's been built in, it's been established it's set in concrete in our lives. It's set in concrete amongst us as a group of believers. You know, it's, it's, it cannot be shaken by anything that happens. Fantastic, hey? Yeah. And you see, grace is the enabling. Grace is not just favor for us to get the things we think we should have. You know, um, and, we, and by the way, we don't have to ask God for grace. We lay a hold of it by faith. All right? We have favor with God. You don't have to ask for it. That's been erroneous teaching that we should ask God for favor. You see, he's our father. We're his sons. We have his favor. End of story. We're supposed to walk in grace. Live by grace. Function by grace in the grace zone, you know. Because we have his grace in our lives. He bestows it upon us. The Apostle Paul said that. This grace was given to me. Wow. <laughs> it was given. It's a gift from God. And it is God's favor upon our lives. You know, we don't have to ask for favor with God and man. Because we've got the Father's favor, people can see it. <laughs> Come on. Absolutely. People can perceive grace upon us. Did you know that? Galatians 2. Paul's talking about when he was going to the Jerusalem council and uh, he was a bit nervous because he hadn't seen any of the apostles for about 14 years except for Peter who we saw once and it wasn't a great meeting because they disagreed on some stuff. <laughs> and he's got history with these guys because he caused a lot of dramas in Jerusalem and surrounding regions and they actually got him out of there before he was killed for, for all the drama and sent him home to Tarsus. So there's some history between the apostles in Jerusalem and Paul. <laughs> so he's a bit nervous, a bit apprehensive about going to the Jerusalem council. But he says, but when they perceived the grace upon me, they extended the right hand of fellowship. Come on. You see, when God bestows grace upon our lives, which he does upon all of us, and he gives us a specific amount of grace for who he's called us to be, Ephesians 4. Then guess what? We, are go we walk in favor. We have this gift of grace. It's the favor of the Father. And it's not so I get a better house and car. <laughs> it's so that I'm enabled to fulfill his purposes. And guess what? When it's all about him and fulfilling his purposes and being a blessing to people, then the Father takes care of me anyway. This is how it works. And yet we have this whole thing in the church. We've got to, got to you know, seek blessing. No, we don't. Blessing's a byproduct. It's not a pursuit. <laughs> if we learn to walk in grace, lay a hold of it, even in the midst of the shakings, guess what? We are going to live a blessed life. And a blessed life is not that we have everything we want. A blessed life is that we are living in the middle of the purposes of God and the grace of God so that God is putting into our lives everything that he knows we need. And even, as Paul said to Timothy, for our enjoyment. How's that? Awesome, hey? Yeah. So let us have grace. Let's lay hold of grace. When there's shaking... We, firstly, we know that we are unshakable and if there's parts of our lives that are, that's okay because that means that we can grow on the basis of what cannot be shaken. 
but this kingdom that we're receiving cannot be shaken and it's in us and we've been had grace bestowed so let's lay a hold of these things that's what the writer's saying come on grab a hold of this <laughs> we can't be passive in these things how do we lay a hold it's by faith so it's not well i've got to earn the right or something no 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 we have the right because we're sons of our father in heaven we already have the right john 1 12 and 13 to those who believe in him and received him to them he gave the right to become mature sons of god Amen. yeah yeah every shaking causes us to become a more a son of god to mature more as sons to grow to become greater sons yeah <laughs> this is how the kingdom of god works so this is not about trying to be a better christian or trying to be gooder is that a word i'm just asking the educator in the room <laughs> it is a word now because i said it <laughs> it's not about trying to be more good or trying to be a better christian this is about walking as the sons of our father and walking in the grace he's bestowed upon us and understanding the kingdom that's in us and it's amongst us so that no matter what goes on right we can position ourselves we can maintain our poise yeah because why should we be shaken when within us is a kingdom that cannot be shaken well it's only going to be the stuff that's not of the kingdom that's going to be shaken and that's a good thing <laughs> so let's lay a hold of grace that enables us we can walk by grace even through the greatest shakings amen number three it says serve god so in the midst of shaking we're supposed to still serve the lord <laughs> and whether they're shaking or not we're here to serve the lord but you know it's interesting what the greek word for serve means it means do what you're hired to do do what you signed on for <laughs> do you know what we signed on for to be a living sacrifice that's our reasonable service the writer of the hebrew says come on <laughs> that's what we signed on for we signed on to take up our cross daily we signed on to deny self in the flesh we signed on to die to self in the flesh this is what we signed on for we signed, signed on to live a life totally abandoned to our king and his purposes. We signed on as living sacrifices. In other words, whether they're shaking or not, get on with it. <laughs> I know the translation in your Bible doesn't read like that, but that's actually the thought in the original language. It's like, so get on with it. <laughs> What are you messing around for? What are you looking at the waves for and sinking into the water, you know? <laughs> Get on with it. You've stepped out of the boat, now go walking. <laughs> Walk on top of the waves. Get on with it. <laughs> That's really the kind of thing it's talking about here. This is not, oh, you'll be okay. <laughs> this is like, you've got more in you than you know. Get on with it. You've been shaken before. You didn't fall over. And if you did, you got up again. Yeah? So in this shaking now, get on with it. <laughs> get on with what you signed on for. Be a living sacrifice. Honor the king, advance his kingdom. Let's get on with the stuff. Who cares about COVID? We've got a mission on this earth. Sorry, I'm getting carried away, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, I am really stirred about this. Because in the midst of my own stuff over the last months, this is the stuff God's been speaking to me about all over again. And when it came to ministering here this weekend, I prepared something else, I must confess. I prepared a nice message. <laughs> no, I didn't, I'm joking. And yet the Holy Spirit just brought me back to this. It, and I just feel like he, he just prompted me, it's time to declare this stuff. Yeah. Time to declare it. You know, 
We've got to do what we're signed on to do. Regardless of the shaking. You know, if the Chinese take over our nation, let's just do what we're hired to do. Come on. I mean, I'm talking a crazy scenario there, but, you know, there's people out there who are scared that might happen. <laughs> but God's not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us an unshakable kingdom. Yeah. So let's get on with it. <laughs> And it says acceptably, which means fully agreeable to God. In a way that's fully agreeable to God. How's that? In other words, let's be the living sacrifice no matter what. Let's stand tall when others are falling. You know? Let's, let's, um, let, let, let's make sure that the foundation is firm when everything's being shaken. Yeah. Because then we can actually walk in grace and in the midst of stuff where people are going crazy, we're going to be the ones who, who are carrying grace and manifesting the grace of God. And also in the, when things are flying apart and other people are thinking that the world's coming to an end, we are going to be actually those who have something to say. And we are going to be those who actually are, are going to be stable when everything else is in, unstable. Come on, this is the stuff. Yeah. This is who we're called to be. If not, then this gospel's not what it's cracked up to be. Come on, if we're just like the rest of the world, then what are we doing here? If we're shaken like the rest of the world is, what are we doing here? We have an unshakable kingdom within us. Yeah. Because, and it's so connected to heaven... That every shaking means heaven's purpose is going to get accomplished in a greater measure in and through our lives. Awesome, hey? Yeah. So let's get on with what we signed on for. Because even in the midst of a shaking, God can do great things. Yeah. Do you know that in most places, the kingdom of God advanced more than ever during COVID last year? Yeah. yeah. I was talking to John Kelly, you know, who's a... Uh, the head of the International Coalition of Apostolic Leaders in the US, he said that every church and ministry that he knew of during COVID actually was in better financial position than prior to COVID. While national economies were taking a beating, there was a release of resources for the kingdom. Because <laughs> the kingdom can't be shaken. Awesome, hey? Not only that, I've heard from so many churches and ministries that they've seen more people come to Christ than ever before during COVID. Come on. This is a kingdom that can't be shaken. We ought to, keep, we ought to stop taking notice of the television news or the social media news because all they're going to try and do is shake us. Got to stop listening to the woke people, that ideology to the cultural Marxists and all that stuff. Do you know why? Because they don't know how to stand in the middle of a shaking, but we do. Because there's a kingdom in us that cannot be shaken. <laughs> and it's amongst us when we come together. Yeah. Awesome, eh? And so we're to do this with reverence, which literally is downcast eyes. In other words, we're, we're really honouring him for who he is. High degree of respect for our Heavenly Father. And godly fear means being careful. So we're, we're not going to be crazy about this. We're not going to uh, be pretentious. We're not going to assume anything. We are going to want to walk hum more humbly than ever with, you know, with God and, and before God and before man. We're going to want to honour God and reverence Him more than ever before in the midst of it all. But, and all that does is it releases more grace. It makes us more immovable, more unshakable. So that whatever's going on in the world, we are those who are seen to be different. And we have a voice then. 
and it's time that the voice of the body of Christ was restored. But it's not going to be restored by bigger sized congregations. It's not going to be restored by having a very noticeable brand. It's not going to be restored, you know, by having, you know, a certain kind of, you know, stage presence and all that kind of stuff. I want to tell you something. All of that stuff is external to the kingdom and it's got nothing to do with the, the real core stuff of the kingdom of God. You know, there are things that are, are vehicles or methodologies that we can use, but we cannot put them up front as being what it's all about because all you need is COVID and you can't do half those things anymore. So what's the real stuff? What can't be shaken? That's what we're talking about here. How we run our services, all that kind of stuff, not, no problem. But in reality, it's what's inside us individually and as a body of people that begins to emerge, the unshakable stuff. <laughs> That's what begins to emerge if we understand. God, Lord.